Hi guys, it's Maddie. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today's video is going to be the first episode in a series that I've been wanting to start on this channel for so long where I take you to a bunch of different New York City spots and give you my full review on them. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name's Maddie. I'm 23 years old, living in New Jersey, and one of my favorite hobbies is going into the city and trying out new restaurants, bars, rooftops, anything really. So I figured why not start a little series where I take you guys along and give you my full review on all the places I go because I show a lot of these places in vlogs here and there, but I never really like deep dive into what I think of them. I'm gonna be showing you everything I order. I'm gonna list prices because I think it's super interesting, especially if you're not from here to see how much like food and drinks go for in New York City and just kind of give my overall thoughts and opinions on these places. Hopefully if you are living in New York City or planning to travel here sometime soon, this series will give you some inspo on places to try. Basically how it's going to work is each episode is going to focus on a different category and we're gonna go to five spots within that category. For restaurants, since there's so many, I thought it would make sense to break it up by neighborhood. So today we're starting off with five restaurants in the West Village. For each spot, I'm gonna give it three ratings out of 10, one for food quality, one for drink, drink quality and one for experience and then we're gonna average those numbers out to give each spot an overall rating out of 10 you guys will catch on as we go along so I don't want this intro to be super long so we're gonna get into it but if you guys are just stumbling across this video I hope you guys subscribe stick around for more and let's get started with our five restaurants in the West Village. I have my laptop here because I made like a whole outline of everything I want to say in this video. So if I'm looking down a lot, that's why. For the first episode of this series, I wanted to start with five restaurants in the West Village because the West Village is my favorite neighborhood in all of New York City. I don't think I ever will, but if I do someday decide that I want to live in New York City, I think the West Village is where I'd want to live. It's just so lively and cute and there's so many restaurants to try the vibes are just always good in the west village so for our first stop on our little food tour of the west village we are going to barambao brazilian kitchen which is on carmine street and carmine street is just like this really small little street but there are so many restaurants actually three out of the five restaurants that we are talking about today are on carmine i'm just gonna do these in chronological order of when i went to them so we're starting off with Barambao, which like I said, is Brazilian food. I personally love Brazilian food, so I already kind of knew I would love this restaurant. I went here all the way back in April and I wasn't sure what the weather was gonna be like, so we made reservations for inside, but I honestly regret that because their outdoor setup is so nice. A lot of New York City restaurants had to really up their outdoor seating game last year because outdoor seating was the only dining option for a little while because of COVID. So they have an incredible outdoor setup. There's a section that's all covered and heated. And I honestly think their outdoor setup is nicer than their indoor because the indoor is pretty small. It's very limited seating inside. So if you do come here, definitely sit outside. To start off with drinks, my friend and I both ordered Kaipo which are basically a Brazilian version of a margarita. They are so delicious. So like a classic caipirinha would be like lime, sugar, and then it's made with cachaça. I love Barambao's drink menu because they have so many different flavors of caipirinhas. So I got a guava one and then my friend got a mango one, which I tried the mango one and I actually liked that one a little bit better, but both were so good. Like I cannot recommend these drinks enough. And each drink was only $12, which doesn't sound that cheap. I'm sure if you aren't from New York City, but you guys will see pretty much any cocktail at a nice restaurant in New York City is gonna go for at least like 15, 16, sometimes 18, sometimes 20, sometimes 22 dollars. So a $12 caipirinha that's actually pretty strong and really good is a great deal in my opinion. For food, we started off with some appetizers to share. So we got the coxinhas, which spoiler alert, were my favorite thing that we ordered. Coxinhas are basically like shredded chicken and cheese inside like a fried dough. And then it came with this sauce that I've never had with coxinhas before, but it was like maybe like a garlicky sauce, but it was so good. And then we also got the pastéis, which is like a Brazilian empanada. So we got two beef and one shrimp. I definitely liked the beef the best, but it's basically like a crispy dough on the outside. 
and those were also delicious before moving on to entrees i actually got another drink i got just a classic caipirinha but i asked her to make it spicy kind of like a spicy marg so it was just like a lime flavored caipirinha with a little bit of spice in it and it was really good those were all the drinks that we ordered so i'm gonna go ahead and give barambao a 9.5 out of 10 for drinks i may be biased because i love caipirinhas but they also had other drinks on the menu they were just so good they were pretty strong like i said Said, and for $12, I just think you can't really beat that. Moving on to entrees. Hi, Lenny. For the entrees, I wanted to try the steak because Brazilians know how to cook their steak. So I got the picanha cooked medium rare and it was cooked beautifully. And it also came with like veggies on top and a side of beans and rice. And then my friend got the moqueca, I think is how you say it. It's like a seafood stew. So it had like shrimp, calamari, mussels. A bunch of different seafoods in a little stew and my friend really really liked it i tried it and it tasted amazing and then we also just got a side of the creamy spinach as well overall i loved all the food we got i definitely think the appetizers outshine the entrees i think this is the perfect place to go with like a friend or a group of friends if you're wanting to get like drinks and apps to share you could definitely get like a few of the appetizers to share and like that could be your whole meal overall for food i'm gonna give Baron about a 9 out of 10. I did notice there was only one vegan option on their menu. I think their brunch and lunch menus have more vegan options, but that is something to note. Um, it's a lot of like meat, so there's not a ton of vegan options. But lastly, for experience, which is basically just going to include kind of everything else. So like the atmosphere, the decor, the seating arrangements, the service, the vibes, everything. I'm gonna give Barambao an 8.5 out of 10 for experience. Like I said, their indoor seating was super limited, but their outdoor seating is amazing. The service was really, really good. Our waitress was super friendly and kind of explained everything really well to us. The experience was good. And like I said, definitely a good spot to go to if you want like drinks and apps with friends. So if we average out all three of those scores, Barambao gets an overall score of nine out of 10. Very strong score, highly, highly recommend checking this place out moving on to our second spot which is right down the street on carmine street from berenbao and that is ha 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 an all vegan mexican restaurant on carmine street they actually have four locations in new york city there's one in west village Lower East Side, Hudson Yards, and Williamsburg. Lots to choose from, but I went to the West Village location. The vibes at this location are so good. They also have a really solid outdoor seating area with heated and covered seating. But we sat inside. We sat like right by the bar. The decor in here is just so nice. It's kind of like darker and moody and there's like music. Definitely a fun place to go to with friends. We obviously started off with drinks. So I ordered the Pineapple y Mezcal. Their cocktail were $15 and mine was kind of like a spicy pineapple margarita. It was a really interesting combo because mezcal has like a smokier taste to it but the pineapple was super sweet i really really liked it and then my friend got me matcha e coconut which was like tequila matcha coconut obviously the presentation of this drink was beautiful they made like a little cactus on top which was so cute and she loved her drink if you like matcha i would definitely recommend this i tasted it and it was really really good so i really like their drink menu i feel like the options were very unique so i'm gonna go ahead and give their drinks a nine out of 10 and then for food unfortunately i didn't try the nachos from here their nachos are like famous and the pictures of them look so good but my friend and i were coming from another place before this so we weren't like super hungry but i definitely want to go back and try the nachos because they look so good they have a bunch of different kinds of street tacos so that's what my friend and i got i got the chipotle sweet potato street tacos and they were only eight dollars for two tacos that were pretty decent size and then i also paid two dollars extra to have guac added on top but basically it had sweet potato beans scallions red pepper and then the guac on top they were pretty spicy i was definitely like working up a sweat eating them a little bit but they were really delicious i was super intrigued to find out like what they would really put in their food because 
I love Mexican food, but a lot of it has like meat and cheese in it. So I was interested to see like what an all vegan Mexican restaurant menu would look like. But all the tacos were just very like innovative and I really liked mine with the sweet potato. It was delicious. My friend ordered the spicy birria tacos, which came with like the little bowl of sauce that you dip them into. And hers were made with banana blossoms, which was really interesting. Hers were very, very spicy. She was like really kind of struggling to eat them a little bit. So if you don't like spicy foods, I wouldn't order either of these tacos, honestly. Super spicy, but she still liked them. And then we also shared a side of the Mexican street corn. It was only $6. I order Mexican street corn anytime it's on the menu, but I was intrigued because traditionally Mexican street corn has the cotija cheese on it. And I don't know what they put on ours. It wasn't cheese, obviously, but it tasted the same. So I obviously loved it. The corn was so good. Last but not least, we didn't skip out on dessert. So we ordered the churritos, which are just churros. And they came with a coconut dulce de leche dip, which was also really good. I feel like you can't ever really mess up churros. So they were delicious. That was all the food we ordered. So overall, I'm going to give Ha 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 an 8.5 out of 10 for food. I thought all of the many options were super innovative. If you're vegan, you definitely need to try this place because a lot of it I wouldn't even have known it was vegan if no one told me even if you're not vegan I think it's definitely still worth it to try this place the food was delicious for experience I'm giving ha 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 a 9 out of 10 the setup and atmosphere was just beautiful like it was very aesthetically pleasing I think this is a great spot to go to with a group of friends or even like a birthday dinner or some kind of special occasion like that that means overall ha 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 gets a score of 8.5 8 out of 10 moving on our third spot in the West Village is going to be quality eats this is like American food steakhouse vibes it's on Greenwich Avenue if you've walked around the West Village ever you've probably walked past this they also have a second location on the Upper East Side the atmosphere here is another really good one they have a pretty good outdoor seating area as well they have like half of it is covered and heated and then the other half is just open and then they also have a pretty big indoor seating area Area as well which is where we sat to start off with drinks basically half of their drink menu is like their staple classic items that they always have and then the other half is like seasonal specials that they switch in and out the drink that I got was called the Hemingway spritz it was $15 and it was on their like staple classic menu so it was basically like a bubbly like spritz drink but with Bacardi. So it had like Bacardi, Prosecco, and grapefruit juice as well. It was really good. I feel like you can't really go wrong with a spritz, especially on like a summer afternoon. So very refreshing, very good. And then for my friend's drink, I'm pretty sure it was on that seasonal specials list. So I can't find the name of it anymore. I don't remember what it was called, but it was probably around $15 or $16 because that's what all their cocktails were. And it was basically like a slushy drink. The presentation was really beautiful. It was like green to white to red. I tasted it and it wasn't my favorite. I think just like preference wise, it wasn't something I'd really order. Wasn't a huge fan of it, but it was all right. So overall, I'm gonna give Quality Eats a seven out of 10 for drinks. I really liked the drink that I had, but I felt like none of the other drinks on the menu were really like catching my eye. So that's why I'm giving it a seven out of 10, but there was nothing like bad about them. Moving on to food, we started with two appetizers. We got the baked potato monkey bread, which was only $6 and it came with six pieces. So I feel like it was a good amount of bread. This bread was all right. I think I had like really high expectations because I had just gone to Maison Pickle like a few weeks before that. And if you've seen their pull apart bread on TikTok, then you know it's like the fluffiest, gooeyest bread ever. So I think I was kind of picturing that when I ordered the monkey bread here and it definitely was not as like fluffy on the inside it was a little more like crispy it was just okay but we also ordered the artichoke mac and cheese as an appetizer and that was really really good i liked that they put artichoke in it because i feel like that's pretty unique and it was super cheesy and then for entrees i ordered the patty melt club which was super unique it was basically like a double burger on a grilled cheese so I didn't want to get just like a basic burger. I wanted to try something different. So I really enjoyed this. The bread that it was on was super like crispy, like a grilled cheese would be. And then there was 
so much cheese and like layers of it since it was like a double cheeseburger I only ate like half of it it was very very filling and then it was supposed to come with coleslaw on the side but I'm not a fan of coleslaw so I switched it out for curly fries and those were really good as well and then since they are kind of known to be like a steakhouse my friend got the classic filet which also came with curly fries and it was cooked medium rare perfectly the steak was really good it was $46 for a 10 ounce steak which I think is like pretty standard I guess maybe a little expensive but everything was cooked perfectly it tasted really good overall I'm gonna give quality eats a 7 out of 10 for food there was nothing bad about it but just relative to like the other restaurants that I'm including in this video it was probably my least favorite food wise so that's why it's getting a 7 but if you're in the West Village and you want a good burger a good steak this is definitely a reliable place to go for that kind of vibe and then lastly for experience I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10 like I said the atmosphere was super nice the indoor and outdoor seating was all set up really great so quality eats gets an overall score of 7.3 out of 10 moving on to our fourth Spot. We are heading over to Oleo EPU. I think that's how you pronounce it, which I feel is like a West Village staple. I always walk past this place and it's always super busy. So I've been wanting to try it for so long. It's Italian food. Italian is probably my favorite genre of food. I just never get tired of eating pasta. So I was really excited to try this place. It's actually just a block away from Quality Eats. It's on Greenwich Ave. My friend and I went there on a rainy night and our reservations were for outside, but it was actually totally fun because they have a huge outdoor seating area that's fully covered and heated. For drinks, I ordered the Farfalla Rosa, which was $18, so a little pricey. But it was basically Grey Goose, lychee, cranberry, and rose water. It was really good. The presentation was really pretty. If you like like sweet, fruity drinks, you'll definitely like this one. And then my friend ordered the Giordino, which was also $18. This was basically like vodka, strawberry, and basil. It was a little less sweet and more like light and refreshing. Overall, I'm gonna give Oleo APU a 7.5 out of 10 for drinks. Just because their drink menu is pretty limited, there's only like six cocktails options to choose from so I just felt like there wasn't very much variety in their drink options also they're $18 which like I said is pretty normal for New York City but compared to the other restaurants that we're going to in this video it's pretty expensive so moving on to food for appetizers bread automatically comes with your meal so it was like bread with olive oil and it also came with olives and artichoke but then we also ordered the bruschetta ricotta which was so good I always order this anytime I'm at an Italian restaurant it's basically just bread with whipped ricotta on top but theirs also had truffle oil on it it was delicious I feel like it's kind of hard to mess this kind of thing up but theirs was just really really good with the truffle and then for entrees I ordered the carbonara I was really eyeing the truffle pasta that was on their menu but it was $44 and I just didn't really feel like paying that so I decided to go with the carbonara it was $25 and it was really good a classic it had prosciutto the egg on top just over spaghetti and the portions were really big too so I could barely finish my whole meal the carbonara was really good all the pasta was cooked perfectly al dente and then my friend got the tagliatelle bolognese she loved it it looked delicious all of the pasta was really really solid I'm gonna go ahead and give Oleo EPU a 9 out of 10 for food I'm still dreaming about that with tricotta and then lastly for experience I'm gonna give them 8.5 out of 10 their outdoor seating like I said was really good even on a rainy day it all worked out the decor inside kind of feels like an art museum like there's so much art on the wall it's very kind of traditional Italian very cozy intimate vibe I think out of all the places that are on the list today I think this will be the best spot for a date night the vibes are kind of like romantic cozy like I said overall Oleo EP gets an 8.3 out of 10 finally we are on our last spot for my five restaurants in the West Village and we are heading back over to Carmine Street to go to Sveta. Sveta is the only restaurant on this list that I've been to more than once. It's a great spot. It's actually Russian food which I don't think I've ever tried Russian food any other time. For drinks, Sveta serves these crushers that are basically like cocktails in a pouch. Kind of looks like an oversized Capri Sun pouch. They're 
$15 each, but they're really big. And I don't know if this deal is still going on, but when I've been there, they let you buy one of these crushers and if you take a picture and tag them on your Instagram stories, you actually get a second one for free. So that's an amazing deal. I hope they're still doing that. But there's basically a ton of different flavors of them. This time around, I got the pink lemonade margarita crusher and my friend got the watermelon margarita crusher. They're all really good. They're definitely very sweet and sugary. <laughs> Think like fruity, sugary, slushy, but with alcohol in it. They're really good and they're pretty strong too, like after two of these. I I am feeling good. They also have other drinks on the menu that aren't these crushers, but I've never tried them, so I can't really speak to how they are. But all the drinks that I've tried from here have been super good, so I'm gonna give their drinks a nine out of 10. And then for food, we always share some appetizers when we come here. So the first one we got was the Russian sushi. It's basically smoked salmon wrapped in like crepe breading with cream cheese and caviar on top. It's actually very like light and has a refreshing taste to it. If you like smoked salmon, you'll definitely like this. It's super delicious. I order it every time I come here. We also just split truffle fries. Can't really go wrong with those, but their fries are super crispy and there's like a sauce that you dip them in. That's really, really good. Also, just to mention, I've ordered the lobster roll from here before and it's so good. I love lobster rolls. I definitely highly recommend that as an app as well. For entrees i ordered the pepper dell shrimp which is like a pasta with a mushroom truffle sauce and shrimp on top it's really really good pasta i love the sauce that's on it and then my friend ordered the russian beef stroganoff which came beautifully presented it looked like a pot pie almost but it was like the creamy beef stroganoff pasta inside like a flaky pastry. It looked beautiful and my friend really enjoyed it so she highly recommends that. All of their entrees are honestly really good. And then we also ordered dessert here. We saw someone pass by with this dish and we were like, we need to try that. It was the homemade Napoleon, which was basically Bavarian cream inside a layered pastry with strawberries on top. It was so delicious. It was really like light. Even though we were so full from dinner, it didn't feel like that much more food. Like it was super light. It was delicious. If you come here, definitely save room for dessert because the Napoleon was so good. Overall, I'm gonna give Sven an 8.5 out of 10 for food. Everything that I've tried has been super delicious from there. I think they have really unique menu items. Just relative to the other restaurants in this video, I think it deserves an 8.5 out of 10. And then lastly, for experience, I'm gonna give Sveta an 8 out of 10. I will say the service here is a little bit slow. I don't really mind. I like enjoying my meal and, you know, socializing with friends and stuff. So if it takes a little bit longer, it's fine. But I do feel like the waiters here aren't really, like, checking in very much. So that's it's getting an 8 out of 10 but overall I highly recommend Sveta I always tell my friends to come here overall Sveta gets an 8.5 out of 10 all right guys so those are the five restaurants in the West Village that I'm going to be reviewing today let me know if you've tried any of these restaurants and what your thoughts are honestly all of them had amazing food and drinks I would recommend going to try any of these let me know what categories you guys want me to do next and again don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already I love you guys so much and and I will see you very soon in another new video. Bye!